Hi, I'm Frank, the GM at Earthbox, and I'm here today with Kathy, our national sales manager and resident horticulturalist, to talk about Blossom and Rot, better known as BER. Kathy, could you explain to our viewers what BER is? Sure. First off, BER stands for Blossom and Rot, as Frank said, and it is always considered a plant disease, and it is not a plant disease. It is actually a disorder. It actually comes from the plant's inability at blossom and or fruiting time to take up enough calcium in its system. It's most common on tomatoes and on peppers. Okay. So how would somebody know if their plant had blossom end rot? How do you identify this problem? It's pretty easy if you pay attention to your plants. Uh, once you start to see your tomatoes or peppers on the plants, you want to start to look at them and almost manhandle them a little bit. I actually have some examples to show you. But you want to look at the bottom of your plant, uh, your bottom of your fruit, which would be the blossom end, which would be here at the bottom, to make sure that you don't have any brown spots. I do have some examples in a couple of different stages. If you look at this one, this is a very young tomato, and this is the very beginning of blossom end rot. This is right, the blossom has just dropped off, and you can see that brown spot. That's the beginning of blossom end rot. Here's another one with a little bit different degree. Here's another one. And here, unfortunately, is a ripe tomato with blossom end rot. So you can see this is not a very pleasant thing. Okay. When it happens, it usually occurs not on all your fruit. So if you see a tomato that has blossom end rot, should you pick it off of your plant, or should, are you okay just to leave it on? You can do either one. I myself tend to pick them off. People will always ask, can you actually eat that fruit? And yes, you could. You could cut off the, the rotten end and eat the top half of the tomato. I don't like to look at that. I have enough tomatoes. I want to, I want to remove that. Okay, so now that we've identified what blossom end rot looks like, how do we prevent this from happening? The best way to prevent is, again, preventing is the, is the key. Uh, the best way, most likely, is to use a high magnesium, high calcium lime, such as a dolomitic limestone, like we suggest in the earth box. If you do this and you do it regularly, as in every time you plant your earth box, you add dolomite, you're probably going to get to the right amount of dolomite and calcium in the soil that you're not going to have the problem. One of the things that I have noticed in a few short years at Earthbox is that it seems to have a cumulative effect. Many people think that you should dump out your soil and start fresh every year or your potting mix. I disagree with that. If you don't have any plant diseases per se, I like to use the same boxes over and over again for my tomatoes and peppers because I like to accumulate that amount of dolomite in there. I like to add my new dolomite every year and I think that really helps control the BER. So if I'm hearing correctly what you're saying, if you're planting a box fresh, we should really try to watch a little bit more closely for blossom end rot. You might have a little bit more chance to get it on your first planting rather than your third or fourth. I would say that's true. Okay. So now that if we have blossom end rot, how do we cure this problem? Is it curable or is our season lost? No, it's definitely curable. Again, reaction time is kind of critical. I would say the earlier you can catch it, the better. My suggestion is remove the affected fruit, but again, not necessary. But I do have a cure-all, but it's a one-time. It's not, shouldn't be used as a preventative because it is a, a lime product that we're going to use. It can drastically change your pH in your box. I don't want you to continue to use it, and I don't want you to use it if you don't have to. But we do have a pretty good solution that will stop and control the BER very quickly. Okay. Why don't okay. you show me what that is? Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to use our special formula, which is one quarter cup of hydrated lime in a gallon of water. And again, I can't say this enough, this is a one-time fix. If you see BER again, don't do it again. This is a one-time only, one application per season. Okay. So what we suggest is hydrated lime, which is a quick lime. It is a caustic material. And one of the difficulties people have had in the past is normally that is sold in an 80-pound bag. Well, you need a quarter cup. So pickling lime is the same thing as hydrated or quick lime. You can buy pickling lime if you go to any store, basically grocery stores, Walmarts, farm stores, and some garden centers that sell canning supplies, you can find pickling lime. So what we're going to do is we're going to buy pickling lime. We're going to use a quarter cup and a gallon of water. Now, as I said, hydrated lime, 
and or pickling lime is caustic, okay? So gloves are probably in order, which I'm not using. I wouldn't want to do this on a windy day outdoors, and I wouldn't want to leave my children or pets around this, okay? But I have a pre-measured quarter cup in here, and I have a gallon of water in a watering can. I'm going to add my hydrated lime, which again is a quarter cup and a gallon of water. Okay. And I'm going to add that to my water reservoir. Now one of the things that I'm going to make sure is that it's at the end of the day when my plants need a drink, or I'm going to make sure that I've tipped my box to make sure that I can fit a whole gallon of water in my water reservoir. Now we've already done that, so I know that this is going to fit. And this is going to go into solution rather easy. So I'm going to mix it up just a little bit. And then Frank, I'm going to let you pour that into the reservoir if you don't mind. No. Now that's going to look like a milky white substance. Okay, well, is there anything else that I need to do? No, that's pretty much it. So how long before I'll see this problem go away? Well, with the new fruit, not fruit that's already on the plant, because that shouldn't have VER if you've looked already, but any of the new fruit now shouldn't get it. Okay. So you want to keep an eye on the current blossoms that turn into fruit. You really shouldn't have any more problems. If you do, again, it would just be a random pick-off, and it wouldn't be very much. Okay. And uh, are there any other plants other than peppers or tomatoes that are really affected by VER? Not really. This okay. is pretty much, these are the plants that really have the problem. Well, that's pretty easy. Thanks so much. I'm Frank. And I'm Kathy. This has been All About Blossom and Rot. Thanks, and have a happy harvest.